In this video, I want to compare the recently released G.I. Joe action figures with the 2021 G.I. Joe action figures that Hasbro released. So why do I have a 2022 O-Ring figure standing here? This is a representation of where the line began compared to where it is now with these four figures in the back. Let's get rid of this guy. So on the left, we have the G.I. Joe figures Hasbro released in 2021, and on the right, we have the Haya G.I. Joe figures that have been recently released in 2023. So why do I have two figures from 2021 here? That's because both of these are entirely different designs. We got two different types of figures of G.I. Joes in 2021. And I have two of the Haya figures simply because it kind of evens things out. We're not going to look at Snake Eyes nearly as much as we're going to look at Storm Shadow simply because this is the first brand new four inch -ish related G.I. Joe design that we've gotten in quite some time. So we'll begin taking a look at the 2021 Destro figure. In 2021, Hasbro brought back the four inch G.I. Joe figures a year after they started releasing the six inch classified figures. What we got, well, one of them was this figure here. While a lot of people were hoping for the re-release of O-Ring action figures, we instead got what I will refer to as the modern era from about 2006 onward style of G.I. Joe action figures. Putting that aside, these figures were both exciting and a bit of a disappointment. Disappointing in the fact that these were just mostly re-releases of earlier 25th anniversary modern era action figures. The standard articulation for these figures was a rotation here at the head and a shoulder rotation and you could hinge it right there. A single pinless kind of, these didn't use pins, so, but a single hinge and a rotation at the elbow a rotation and a hinge at the wrist, and there is no waist rotation here. Instead, there's this torso cut that allows you to go back and forth like this, leaning forward and back like that, and some metal ball joints here in the crotch area, allowing at least this figure to only do the splits about that far and sitting about that well. These figures did have, did or do have metal screws in the legs. There is a pinless joint upper knee and a pin visible pin lower joint so you could have the double uh, bendy knees right there there's no thigh cut in this figure there is nothing here at the boot no boot rotation and the ankle has a hinge and a pivot uh, just like so so for all I mean, for the most part, when these figures came out they really upped the G.I. Joe level of articulation compared to well and <laughs> there you go. Everyone who wants to take that as a sign that O-Ring is better than modern era, please do. But anyway, this was a very huge step up in articulation compared to the O-Ring figures. Even though it's been very difficult, I've noticed, to really replicate this O-Ring waist motion right there. I think it's been very difficult to properly execute that. So this is what the modern era, as I've mentioned I'll refer to, our uh, figure looks like just about every G.I. Joe figure from 2006 to say, well, early 2021 had this style of articulation. Next, we get to Grunt, and this is one of my favorite figures from that year. This is a later year release, later in 2021. And this completely changes up the articulation from this guy. Besides the fact, with the modern era, we got variable heights. O-ring figures pretty much always had the same height and the same proportions because of how they were designed. These newer figures have different heights based off of how big the character should be. So this figure has a rotation at the neck and a up and down motion. There is a rotation at the shoulder and I'm gonna be really careful, I'll be honest, because I don't want this figure to break. It's the only one I've got. Uh, the arms go up at the shoulder like so. The elbow I'm not going to bend because I'm nervous. <laughs> uh, has a hinge and a rotation just like the other figures and the wrist is the same. Where a difference comes in is this figure has a waist rotation. You can rotate it at the waist. This is the first time they designed a modern era figure, as far as I'm aware, to do that. It still has the torso cut. You can wiggle them back and forth. You can go forward and back, and that's pretty cool. You can uh, give them the splits. They no longer have the metal T joint down here in this crotch. It is now plastic and more susceptible, I would say, to breaking. They have added in a thigh rotation right there. The knees are double pinless right here, 
and there is a boot rotation added in as well. Then you get the pivot and the hinge down here at the ankle. So they've redesigned this figure, and we got about four of them. We have this figure, Grunt, Stalker, Cobra Officer, and I believe Cobra Trooper all had this new style. Everything else from 2021 was this re-release. So they were designing brand new figures for us by the end of that year, and it seemed like a lot of people were kind of unhappy about the distribution and maybe even the style of figures. So for whatever reason, they quit. And I'm personally going to say I was very disappointed because they were finally getting into new sculpts, new new things. And uh, I was super excited. This is very much in the style of the Fortnite figures in the articulation points. And I understand some of these figures broke on people. I even had a stalker break on me on camera i believe for a video one time and that was really disappointing but where they were heading with this line i think was really cool and i think would have been we could have had a couple years of really great four inch figures from hasbro however because of a lot of factors they quit creating that four inch modern era line and for the 40th anniversary in 2022 we got new o-ring figures not old ones but they they remade these and they put out a bunch of them and while we're not getting these anymore, we are getting new 4-inch styled figures from Haya Toys. Now, I don't know a lot about Haya Toys. I do own a few of their figures. I have a Robocop here. And I have a... is this a Jungle Hunter Predator? I can't remember exactly what it is. I purchased these only so I could have 4 inches style figures to go with my Fortnite action figures. Because after all, these two guys are now uh, characters from Fortnite if... You know, they've never had anything else. I was concerned a little bit. Let me back this up. I was excited and concerned a little bit for these G.I. Joe action figures when I heard their release because I had these two guys over here. And let's just take a quick look here at Robocop. So Robocop has some kind of limited articulation. He doesn't do the splits very well. In fact, not really at all. If you want him to sit, I'm glad they don't have his car because that might be kind of difficult to get him into his car. If you want him to raise his arms, well, that's as far as they're going. And I understand this is based off of the Robocop that's kind of stiff in the videos and the movies and that he doesn't have like crazy awesome articulation. And every time I move all these joints, they squeak. If you can hear that. And so... I mean, this it, figure looks good. Don't get me wrong. I really like the figure. I think he's awesome, but rather limited. So then I have this guy as well. And again, to me, it's a bit limited. Like, if you want him to do the splits, that's it. If you want him to sit down, that's it. And because of some of the stuff up here around his head, like, that's about as far up as he brings his arms. And they're, they're very highly detailed. They're very cool. Um, but I, again, he squeaks all the time, not really squeaks, but you can hear rubbing in the joints as you move it around. And so was a little bit concerned, like, well, shoot, how good are these figures going to be? Because we're used to pretty highly articulated. Sure. I say our highly articulated, I show you an O-ring figure, but these guys, you can bend them all over the place. You can pull them apart. You can do all sorts of things. They're loose. They're great. They're awesome. So compared this to these guys, if I'm going to play with a figure, I would much rather play with something like this. However, this guy is still pretty cool as well. You can grab him and roll him around and wiggle him and do all sorts of things while maybe being a little bit more careful on certain joints because... After all, modern action figures are more fragile, aren't they? So then these guys show up, and I'm pretty excited to see them. They have all... Let's take off this gear for a minute here. They have all sorts of articulation all over the place. They have what I would classify... Haha, ha, classify. Six-inch figure level articulation. So you got a ball joint up here for the neck. It goes all over the place. The arms rotate at the shoulders. There is a bicep cut. I haven't seen a bicep uh, rotation like this in a 4-inch figure at all, except for this guy from McFarlane, the Avatar. I don't remember his name at the moment, but, uh, you know, that was pretty cool. And then Storm Shadow here, which Snake Eyes has the same thing, double pinless elbow joints. That's pretty cool, because up to this point, 
especially with the newly designed figures, we only had a single uh, joint there. And I will brave it. That's as far as this guy's uh, stand grunt. Come on, you can do it. There we go. I mean, that's a, a pretty big difference there in bending up the elbow. Stay. <laughs> stay, boy, stay. <laughs> and instead of a hand that has a hinge and a rotation, this is on a ball joint. Get this guy out of the way so you can see. But this has a ball joint, and you can swap out the hands. We haven't had anything like swappable hands on previous G.I. Joe figures, like, ever. So that's cool. He's got a torso back and forth, and it's actually pretty nice. It doesn't look like there's a big cut through his middle. We can take this off as well, so we can look more at this middle section here. But I think it's pretty... It's not seamless. Of course it's not going to be seamless, but I think it looks good when compared to this big, heavy, shadowy cut we've got here on some of the G.I. Joe Hasbro figures. And he has a waist rotation, just like Grunt over here. And, well, he is actually a little bit taller. Is Oh, we just knocked... Grunt took out Robocop. And you know what? Looks like Grunt and Storm Shadow are roughly the same size. So they go well together, I think. Let's see if we can uh, uh, return bef uh, non-chaotic... Uh, area here. Come on. You know what, Robocop? I don't think you need your stand. So then, uh, we don't need his stand now either. If you want to do the splits, so he can do the splits pretty good. He does also have, like Grunt, a rubber ball joint system down here. I wish I could get this up. There is a ball joint up in here that will rotate a little bit separate from this upper thigh, this leg area, which is an interesting joint I've never seen before. He does have a thigh rotation as well. If you can see past my, that's that black line right there. So it's interesting when I try to rotate the thigh, the ball joint up here kind of takes over and there's a lot more rotation up there. He has double pinless knees. Now Snake Eyes has a much better pinless knee system. Let's get him standing here, I, whatever. Let's bring Snake Eyes over, take off his accessories for a moment. So, Snake Eye's double pinless knee allows that kind of a bend right there. Storm Shadow allows that kind. And you'd think he would have maybe a better bend than St uh, Snake Eye's. But when I go to bend the lower, so you can get a, a stronger or a deeper, more of a bend there, well, you start to see a little bit right there, that black spot that you're starting to see the end of that knee joint. And when you pop it, it, literally pop it back into place, it almost sounds like you're breaking something. Now, these figures don't have any kind of a boot rotation here on either of them. So it goes straight down to the ankle, and there's a pivot and a hinge down there. So that's one thing that I would say Hasbro figures have over the Haya is that one little boot cut. This little rotation right here. Whether you think that's good or bad, that's eh, up to you. I don't know. I mean, there's some huge positives for these Haya figures, like the double uh, knee, uh, <laughs> the double elbow, and the bicep rotation. I think those are really awesome. I think the look is really nice compared to this version. When you get down to it, I think the Hasbro looks more toyish. And sure, you know that's kind of what it's supposed to be, kind of. And the Haya is more, I would say, collector-focused and oriented. In fact, there may be, on the package, I think it says 15+, plus, so that's definitely not, you know, young kid toyish. So the Haya figures retail at about $20. I got mine for $26 from an online store, but you should be able to find these figures for somewhere between $20 and $25, whether it's online or maybe a local specialty store might get these in, which I don't think is bad for these styles of figures because Robocop, Robocop was $20 and Predator back here was $20 as well from the same company. Grunt, however, I believe these were $10. They were either $10 or $12, I don't remember. And... So, for example, Grunt came with a backpack and a gun. Oh, yeah. And a figure stand. So he had his basic-looking backpack and a basic-looking gun. Now, Storm Shadow has a pretty heavy-duty figure stand base. He comes with two swords, two scabbards, three arrows, a quiver, and they both attach to his back. Here's one of the swords. 
let's see he also has a removable bandolier and i got the stuff over here a hood if i hold it the right way and while he's got this hood he also has a removable hood that uh, looks like it's folded back behind him so you can swap that out for this hood he comes with a bow two if i can get him here two hands so two replaceable hands here and these little i-beam things that i will try to hold up so you can see them these little i-beam things that are designed to attach to this figure stand base so you can actually hook multiple Haya figure stands together so like this uh, robocop stand over here can have the i-beam hooked there and the high beam hook there i-beam not high beam and then i can take the storm shadow stand and hook that on together like so so that's really cool i like how the high uh, figure stands the bases all can hook together and create like a little playset area where you could have them battling it out you could have multiple characters hooked to uh fighting it out or or standing together but i like how their figure stands work and then when you're ready you can just separate them like so we'll knock predator back here over and we'll separate those and so yeah i like how these figure stands work so there's a lot of gear here from Storm Shadow, whereas, as I pointed out, Grunt, he has three, well, okay, I lied. Grunt has more than that. There is actually a knife right here that re can be removed. Start knocking things over when you don't have a lot of room here. And over here on his right side, I did forget that there is a removable gun there, as well as his helmet. So I, I tried to make Grunt look like, you know, pitiful. So apologize for that there. And actually, one last thing, not really removable, but he has this, or is it? He has this web gear. You can take it off. I don't know if it actually removes, but by like, you can slide it off and separate pieces, and you could probably slide it off if you really wanted to. So let's, uh, let's add that up here real quick to you know, one, two, three, four five six seven he probably has about seven accessories that he comes with while storm shadow has one two three four five six seven eight let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen almost twenty you might be able to take this off i'm not sure so he's got almost twenty accessories for that now, not knowing Haya, and I'm sure you could correct me and let me know in the comments, I'm not sure how much reuse they have. We'll just bring Snake Eyes in for a moment here. I don't know how much reuse they have, repainting, but I know with Hasbro, like for example, this Grunt, most of this figure was used for Stalker. It was just repainted with the, the camo, not this Stalker, but like the light green and the dark green camo. And so Hasbro has a lot of reuse. So that probably will factor into the price as well. Since these figures stand about the same height, can they hold each other's accessories? Well, let's see. Grunt doesn't look too bad holding that sword, if you ask me. And let's see. Uh, we'll use Snake Eyes this time because he actually has a trigger hand. We'll put Grunt's rifle in uh, Snake Eyes's hand. So... You know, two characters who are holding accessories that they usually don't use. I think that actually looks really pretty good. I think that looks really nice. Uh, we'll take Grunt here, and we'll get Snake Eyes' uh, backpack. And, as expected, the hole is bigger than the peg, so you try to put that on, it's not going to stay. That's disappointing, but expected. Let's uh, take a look here. Since that was the opposite there, I'm guessing this peg is bigger than the hole. Let's scoot this away. And, yeah, you're going to have to trim this down if you want the those uh, backpacks to fit in there because they're just not going to. I do have one funny attempt. Let's try his helmet. This is a softer rubber. It's not real sturdy. <laughs> Let's just see. Hey, look at that. Snake Eyes is in the army now. <laughs> the, the highest Snake Eyes is wearing a classic maybe not quite o-ring og but at least modern era og gi joe helmet i think we're going to keep that on him for just a little bit because i find that to be pretty funny <laughs> if we look at these bases <laughs> i'm sorry i'm having a kick off of this this is great <laughs> you waited all the whole video just to see that looking at these bases 
this is a much bigger peg than this is so the hole on the base of these figures most likely will not fit on there and same the the, the the modern era figures will probably just fall off of this base. So the bases are not interchangeable. You cannot swap the hands because of how they are. The hands on the 25th era are a peg based. I don't know if I can actually pull those out without breaking something. But there's a peg sticking out of the hand. This needs a ball joint sticking out of the wrists for you to put the, the hands on. Another thing just for fun I'm going to try is sliding. Okay, so that storm shadow hood is not going to just slide over grunt's head and i'm not interested in well i mean i guess i'm interested uh, i probably wouldn't try to remove this head of grunt without warming it up just because i don't want to break it now we'll set <laughs> we'll set uh, commander or, or grunt snake eyes back here in the bit bring storm shadow back the other thing that's actually really cool about the Haya figures is the level of detail now i know grunt is not specifically like a crazy detailed uh, figure or character he's pretty much an all green and there's some really cool detail kind of molded into the figure but it's not really painted you get these light green pockets light green grenade and a silver belt buckle you get this storm shot over here I and mean, let's just talk about the thing that everybody probably notices you either see this as a tattooed arm or a cyborg arm it, you know either way this is crazy detailed you know, I don't know how they do it. I'm sure it's something easy. I'm not in toy design or toy making. I'm a consumer, so I just look at these things and like, wow, that's cool. I'm just somebody who likes cool stuff. And I look at this and like, man, that's cool. I don't think we ever would have gotten something like this on an O-ring figure. I don't even know if Hasbro has the ability to do something this level of detail on a small figure or not. But either way, that's pretty cool. There is a lot of little details that aren't painted on this figure there's a pretty crisp and clear cobra sigil right here on storm shadows left pocket chest piece uh, even the level of detail on these metallic gauntlets is pretty crazy little uh, bits of yellow and some red there metallic the colors are they really pop they're really cool it's hard to talk about snake eyes and color popping because he's like all black except for now he's got the green helmet <laughs> but the detail here down there, their Rashikagi symbol that's on uh, Storm Shadow's belt area. If you can see that, it's kind of dark here for me. So I don't know what the level detail is. Um, Grunt definitely does not have what I would classify as an overly detailed face. He has, I mean, compared to Storm Shadow, look at these eyes. Dude, this guy is menacing. His silver mask, his eyes. I don't want to meet him in a dark alley. Grunt? I mean, besides the bad guy, good guy thing, Grunt? You know, I don't know. It. I look at it and there's like a different le level of detail for this figure than there is for this one. And so you might be paying a little bit more simply for that level of detail. I'm not necessarily a detail. I love this figure. I already told you this is like one of my favorite figures from that year. Actually, it is probably my favorite figure. So I'm not like throwing my figure under the bus. I just realized he's holding the sword wrong and that's irritating. So another thing is multiple hands with these figures is really cool. So you can hold swords or hold guns or sometimes there's a fist hand. A fist hand. With the Hasbro figures, one thing that is disappointing to me a little bit is the way they style the hands. So they're kind of at this like angle here and they all have a finger that sticks out and they kind of look goofy sometimes like okay let's put the sword back in grunt's hand so like he looks a little goofy having a trigger finger holding a sword now it's not a huge thing back in the day with the o-ring figures i mean we had what i would call like a c grip you see right there it held everything but there also wasn't like trigger if you see the guns there was no trigger hole you just put the gun which i'm doing off camera because it's easier there you go you just kind of put the gun in the hand and off you went and pow 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 and you were happy for the rest of the day right so nowadays we've got trigger holes let's grab snake eyes gun over here actually that's something we should try let's try the gun that comes with the snake eyes figure in a grunt's hand so it looks like his finger just barely fits in there or it's close enough to to work I think that works pretty good it's the right size and i think for the trigger finger i think it works pretty good that's another thing with the accessories nowadays and figures nowadays they have to have trigger holes because there's so many trigger fingers out there 
So you got to make sure you can't just put something like, stay there, grunt. You can't grab something necessarily like Stalker's O-ring gun from back in the day because they slide it in there and all of a sudden the trigger finger is, well, it's hanging out below the trigger. And to some people that just looks really stupid and looks really bad. You know, to me, he's holding a weapon and I don't care. I'm not that close to detailed. Dude, these are toys. But even still, actually, now that I look, I've never done this before. I think he doesn't look too bad with the O-ring weapon in hand. So ultimately, I don't think there's much more I can do for a comparison between the Hasbro 2021 figures. Like, I know if anyone has felt bad because I haven't used the early 2021 Destro, I just figured Grunt overall is a better figure. And that would be a better comparison than using a less articulated, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to trying to show the best of what Hasbro put out as opposed to what they were putting out in the early 2000s or so. Anyway, a Hasbro 2021 figure next to a 2023 Haya figure. I hope this kind of helps give you some comparison and like points of reference and kind of understanding where we've been, like really where we've been and where we're currently at. I find this really cool. I like looking at figures. I like looking at the differences and I like seeing how companies change things up a little bit. And you know, an evolution of a toy brand where a lot of us are old enough to have been through many iterations of a toy line now to see all these different types and styles. No, I didn't bring in some of those really odd ones from the late 90s, but I still, I just find it really fun. And I hope you enjoy this style of video. I haven't done one like this in a long time, but it, it's kind of a fun thing to look at. Anyway, if you've stuck with me for this long, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. And if you haven't seen my review on Highest Snake Eyes, click the video down here. And if you haven't seen my review on Highest Storm Shadow, click the video down here. I'll see you in the next one.